Welcome back. Topic two, job costing and spoilage. First, an overview. Job costing also has special treatments for the cost of normal and abnormal spoilage. Abnormal spoilage is identified separately from normal spoilage, similar to how it may be for other types of costing, such as process costing, not covered in this course. The costs of abnormal spoilage are not considered inventoriable product costs and are written off to the income statement as soon as they are incurred. Normal spoilage is considered to be part of the normal manufacturing costs. Job costing is unique in that it requires us to determine if some normal spoilage is attributable to a specific job or common to all jobs. Under job costing, when we're determining whether or not the normal spoilage should be attributable to a specific job or all jobs, we must ask, is it a normal part of production process that this spoilage occurred? And is it coincidental that it occurred during this job? If the answer to this question, to both of these questions are yes, then the normal spoilage is simply costed as manufacturing overhead. Since an allocation rate for overhead is used to spread overhead to jobs, this means that normal spoilage is now evenly spread across all jobs through this overhead allocation process. If the answer is no, then the normal spoilage is costed to a specific job. Let's dig into that a bit more next. Under job costing, if normal spoilage is attributable to a specific job, because of that particular specifications of that job and not because it is a normal part of the production process, then the spoilage is assigned to that job. When we are calculating the value of loss to recognize, it's the amount of spoilage that has been incurred less any recoverable cost in selling the spoiled goods. For abnormal spoilage, under job costing, any abnormal spoilage is calculated as and charged to an abnormal loss account. This is the same whether or not it is believed to be attributable to the production process or a specific job. This can be either a separate line that rolls up to cost of goods sold or period cost, meaning within the SG&A uh, section. I note this because the main thing here is when it's abnormal, it is immediately removed from the inventoriable costs that go to your balance sheet or statement of financial position, and rather it is charged directly to the income statement. Now, when it's charged directly to the income statement, it depends on the company as to whether or not you would see it be rolled up to cost of goods sold or uh, sg &A selling goods, uh, uh, selling general and administration. And this is similar to what you would see in CPA PEP. All right, time for a question. You work for the manufacturer of paintball markers. Paintball markers are made in batches to the specification of the brand name they will be sold under. A job costing system is in use. Some of the machines on the production line need to regularly be recalibrated so that accurate boring of marker barrels occurs. <laughs> because of the cost of paying an engineer to perform recalibration, it only occurs once every several days. One day, the day before recalibration, 100 paintball markers are found to be defective due to the fact that the calibration had naturally wavered to an imperfect standard. The spoilage resulting from this will likely be considered A. Abnormal and assigned to the jobs being run that day. B. Normal and assigned to the jobs being run that day. C. Normal and assigned to manufacturing overhead. Or D. Abnormal and assigned to manufacturing overhead. What do you think? The answer is C. This appears to be a regular problem with the production line in which the company has decided it is better to let some defective paintball markers be produced rather than paying for higher frequency machine calibration. Since this is part of the production process normally, it doesn't appear specifically attributable to any jobs. As well, it is part of the normal expectation for spoilage. 
As a result, the answer is C. Normal spoilage assigned to manufacturing overhead is the most suitable here. All right, so these were two relatively short videos, and that's because I really wanted you to get a handle on the, the theory behind these, and then the quants follow of the theory. So now, please, with this time, I encourage you to go straight to the tutorial videos, uh, the tutorial questions, try one of the questions, then check out the video, see how well you've done, and go from there. Thank you so, so much. I hope you have a wonderful week, and we will talk soon.